Oh my god, I still can't believe I'm doing this. Back in 2011, DC Comics relaunched its entire universe of comics with new stories, new designs, and new characters. One of those new characters was introduced in Teen Titans, a gay Mexican metahuman with the ability to generate and manipulate psionic bricks. Created by Scott Lobdell and Brett Booth, that character's name is Miguel Jose Barragan, alias Bunker. And DC Comics just asked me to redesign him for a new story. Let's dig into it. What is up guys? Andrew here and welcome to Comic Booker. All things comics from a creator. Long running characters tend to evolve with time. As they pass through the hands of the many creators who tell their tales, these characters are updated every so often to hopefully make them better and more relevant to the times. Redesigning an official DC character was a dream that I never thought could happen. So when writer Josh Trujillo suggested one for Bunker, I absolutely jumped at the chance. This is something I've never done before, and it's a task that I don't take lightly. I remember the first time I read Frank Miller's Dark Knight, with that big chunky build and that minimalist Bat logo, which completely changed how I saw Batman. I also remember when Frank quietly revamped the X-Men costumes and did the same. Darwin Cook's Catwoman, Brian Hitch's Ultimates, J.H. Williams III's Batwoman, Jamie McKelvey's Captain Marvel, the list of amazing superhero designs goes on and on and on. I think a well-executed redesign updates a character for modern times, while keeping the essence of what made the character interesting in the first place. If done right, it can supercharge a story and make a character more relevant. So here's my rundown of my attempt to do just that. Step 1. Research Created in 2011, Bunker isn't a character that I was very familiar with. While I jumped on the New 52 hype train back then, I dropped Teen Titans after the first story arc, gravitating more towards Scott Snyder's Batman and Francis Manapool's Flash. But when writer Josh Trujillo mentioned doing a story with him, I went and reread Bunker's introduction, as well as all subsequent appearances, including his guest appearances in Red Hood and the Outlaws, and more recently in DC Pride 2021. The character is still relatively new in the DC universe, so catching up on his history wasn't that difficult. I quickly realized that Bunker was one of the most interesting new characters of the New 52 era. Despite looking a bit like a 90s Stormwatch character thanks to Brett Booth's art, Bunker wasn't an anguished grimdark teen or a tortured gay stereotype. From his inception, he was depicted as very positive, hopeful, and a supportive team player, uh, while still being a bit of a flamboyant gay stereotype. Still, here is a rare superhero character that is brown-skinned, gay, and raised Catholic, like me. And all of these attributes are baked into his character's DNA. And unlike other new characters in the past decade, he had a wholly original identity that wasn't reliant on a more established hero. That's some solid design ground to build on. I did this study called Bunker Through the Years, where I redrew all the major costumes, trying to understand them so I could synthesize them all into a modern version. I was most inspired by Kenneth Rockefort's version, which depicted Bunker's powers in some truly exciting and versatile ways. I have to say, I, I wasn't too enthused by the Red Hood version, where he worked as an enforcer for the Penguin and had a bit of a grim dark period. I think we have plenty of DC characters with a dark vibe. And I think Bunker's appeal is in how optimistic and, pardon the pun, constructive his personality is. Still, we're all susceptible to having dark periods, so in the grand scheme of things, it kind of serves his character well to have gone through that period. For me, it feels like he wallowed in a little bit of darkness before picking himself back up again. So with all of that info in my head, I went to the next step, where I started to think about where the character could go next. Step 2. Sketches Taking his whole history into account, where he'd had all these adventures and moments of self-discovery, I figured that Bunker's grown up a bit since his introduction and now has more control over his powers. This opens up some opportunities to take his design to the next level. My initial sketch centered around turning that Brett Booth ninja mask element into more of a psionic signature. I like the idea of a casual clothes Miguel who could power up and be in costume without having to put on spandex. This would allow him to wear different clothes according to the mood and circumstance, while still being recognizable when using his powers. 
I imagined a pink, semi-transparent energy projection that runs from the bottom of his nose and rolls over his head, echoing the mask design from his original costume. I noticed in his earliest appearances that sometimes his projections can get transparent, so this is consistent with that. When the psionic bricks get tougher and more realized, they get more opaque. For his clothes, I like the idea of a high collar and a chunkier, boxier fit. To echo that brick motif, I borrowed a bit from Japanese streetwear and experimented around with some color variations. Then I put it all together in a package for the next stage. Step 3. Feedback and revisions. With a job like this, it was really important to me to let the design develop in collaboration with the rest of the team. I sent my initial design sketches over to my writer Josh Trujillo and to my editor Michael McAllister, who responded with a lot of thoughtful feedback. One note was about the hair. The shaped look was interesting but a bit of a departure from the original Bunker, who had something of a brushed up quiff. The other major note was about how the high collar jacket seemed a bit bulky and ill-suited to Bunker's personality, which was a bit more carefree. Also, our story was going to be set in sunny Palmera City, and this seemed a bit warm for that. So I went into revisions with Gusto. I presented a few more costume options including a wider range of fashion looks that he could wear. I wanted his bricks to be a more dynamic and liquid part of his design because that makes him so much more fun to draw. I briefly tried this ponytail look which was thankfully rejected because it made Miguel look a bit too old for a Teen Titan. I also threw in more hair options and while I pushed hard for the dyed purple close crop shave a la Frank Ocean, we all ended up agreeing on something closer to his original hairstyle. After some more back and forth, I sent over these three pages which seemed to crystallize the design. I thought there was something really iconic about having an all pink brick textured superhero, so I made sure the colors leaned into that. I found some of the early bunker sketches by Brett Booth online and decided to implement that original unused logo, except flip it upside down to be a more stable, upwards pointing triangle of bricks. This, along with the psionic signature on his face, could serve as stable, consistent visual markers when the rest of his design shifted to other configurations. Step 4. Finalization and Execution After all the back and forth, here's the final design sheet we settled on for this story. I threw in a ton of notes in case another artist had to draw them. And boy was I in for a wonderful surprise. I've loved Ben Caldwell's work for years, ever since I first encountered his Wonder Woman story in DC's Wednesday comics. It was a huge honor seeing him draw my design on the cover of this book. I gushed about it when I met him at this year's New York Comic Con, and he gave me some really good advice on being in the comics biz. Anyway, the last step in this design process was the longest. I had to draw the design in action. Josh and I were given 10 pages in this year's holiday special, and we totally went for it. Here's what Bunker looks like in the final pages. I'm so thankful to my writer, Josh Trujillo, for crafting a story that really gets to the heart of Bunker while showcasing his new costume and abilities. I think it's an awesome short comic, and if it's the only story this version of Bunker ever gets, at least it's an epic one. So when all is said and done, how do I feel about this redesign? Well, first off, I had a blast doing it, and I'd like to think that it's the most Bunker version of Bunker yet. I did my best to respect the history while still pushing things to the next level. Plus, I had an absolute blast drawing it in action, which is always a good sign. So my fingers are crossed that readers receive this redesign well. Josh and I want to do more Bunker stories, so we're praying there's enough interest to support that. DC's Twas the Might Before Christmas is out December 12, 2023 in comic book stores everywhere. It's 80 pages of comic stories and Bunker is just one of them. And it's just in time for the holidays. This is my third DC Comics project of the year and I'm so proud of it. Thanks for all the support and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.